Start with an equilateral triangle. Next, divide the sides into three equal segments. Draw more equilateral triangles, so the middle segment of each side is the base of the equilateral triangle. Remove the base of each mini equilateral triangle and repeat this process indefinitely. Take each side, break it up into three equal segments, draw an equilateral triangle on top of the middle segment, then remove that middle segment. This is what's known as the coach snowflake, and it's one of the earliest fractals to have been described. What I love about it is that its properties are a little paradoxical. Let's look at the perimeter of this object. To find the perimeter, we'll have to describe each iteration. The first iteration would just be the base triangle itself, this would be the second iteration, the third, and so on. We'll have to know how many sides are present at each iteration in order to find the perimeter. Let's let capital N sub N denote the number of sides at iteration N. The way that this pattern works is that each side is then replaced with four sides. So we could say that the number of sides of the nth iteration is the same as the number of sides of the previous iteration times four. We start with three sides to begin with. Every iteration, we multiply the number of sides by four. So the number of sides of the nth iteration should be three times four to the n. What about the length of each side? Let's let capital S sub n denote the length of each side after n iterations. Now we didn't specify the length of the side of the original triangle, let's just call it little s. And since we divide the side lengths in thirds, every single iteration will divide each side length by three. So s sub n should be s over three to the power of n. Now we can find the perimeter. The perimeter of this shape, I'll call it p sub n, the perimeter after n iterations, should be the number of sides times the length of the sides. That's just three times four to the n, times s over three to the n. You could rewrite this with properties of exponents. Let's just call this three s times four thirds to the n. This is our perimeter after n iterations. So you might be wondering, well, what happens if we just do this process forever? What if we take the limit as n goes to infinity? After we do an infinite number of iterations, what do we expect the perimeter to approach? Well, taking this limit, the quantity 4 thirds just keeps getting larger and larger. 4 thirds is bigger than 1. Multiplying it by itself over and over is going to get bigger and bigger, and so the limit of the perimeter is infinity. This perimeter should be unbounded. Here's the paradoxical part. What if we look at the area of this object? Since we're talking about area, we'll have to know how many triangles there are, not just the number of sides. Let's let capital T sub n denote the number of new triangles added in the nth iteration. Well, the new number of triangles we add just depend on the previous number of sides. We start with three sides and we add three triangles. So T sub n is actually capital N minus one. The number of triangles added is the number of sides from the previous iteration. And we already had this value. Just a quick bit of algebra, we can see that this is three times four to the n minus one. What about the area of each triangle added? I'll call it a sub n. The thing to notice here is that each new triangle is one ninth the area of the triangle in the previous iteration. If we start with this original equilateral triangle, again, we didn't specify the original area of the first triangle, let's just call it A naught, A initial. Since we divide up one of the sides into three segments, it has one ninth the area, which means that the area of each new triangle added is A naught divided by nine to the N, N being the nth iteration. Here's the fun part. We have a formula for the number of new triangles added and we have a formula for the area of each new triangle added. So the total area added by each new iteration 
I'll call it B sub N, should be the number of triangles added times the area added. Just multiply our two formulas together, and we can make this look a little nice with properties of exponents. That's the total new area added in each iteration. We're interested in the total area of the snowflake altogether. So we have to sum this iteration for every value of n. Let's let capital A sub n be the total area of the snowflake after n iterations. That's a naught, the original area of the triangle, plus the sum of b sub n. This is a fairly funky formula, but what's great is that we can still use it to find the limit as n goes to infinity. If we were to perform an infinite number of iterations, what would the area of this object approach? And so what we have here is an infinite series. This is something that you would probably come across in Calc 2. This series is what's known as a geometric series, and it has a very nice formula that gives us its result so long as the base in absolute value is strictly less than one. Here the base is 4 ninths, so it's all good. Just plugging this into the formula, doing a little bit of algebraic number crunching, we get our answer. It's a shape whose perimeter approaches infinity, but its area approaches a finite value.